Guten Tag. Um, thank you very much for welcoming me at uh, Jochen Berlin. Um, so many of you would have known me uh, from Wear OS, and um, I'm the uh, lead developer advocate for Wear OS, our smartwatch platform at Google. Um, so today I'm going to talk about three things. First, how does Wear OS use uh, machine learning uh, in our own product, and what are the user stories that uh, we can share with you? Um, second, integrating ML things. If all things goes well, then I'll be live coding uh, this portion, um, and hopefully it will compile and run on this for a little thing called Android Things. And then number three is I thought, hey, ML Kit is just too easy to use. What else can I do? So I went down the rabbit hole of training my own uh, model uh, using TensorFlow. So I would kind of uh, hopefully have time to share that as well and some of the lessons learned. Um, so what it was one of the first thing that we did with uh, machine learning uh, with Wear OS. Um, so the first thing that we recognize is Wear OS as a platform um, have a very limited uh, screen real estate, um, but at the same time, user really wanted this rich input um, into the uh, into the platform. And one of the first project that we did was to actually partner with our. Um, keyboard handwriting team in Zurich, uh, between London and Zurich, uh, to come up with this emoji recognizer. So how does it work? Uh, we take around 5,000 plus features um, from the user, so there'll be strokes, uh, pressure, the order uh, that the strokes are, um, are done, and then we turn it into around 2,000 plus emojis. And in this one, the lessons learned here is sometimes um, when we are not confident about one particular emoji, uh, actually picking the top three or the top five for the user is super helpful. Um, so we train uh, using around quarter of a million um, sample, um, basically very, very hard work from your Google engineers, uh, donating their engineering time to draw emojis for us. Um, and um, that was one of the you know, really popular features that we have uh, back at I.O. Uh, 2015. So what do we do next? Um, the next thing that we did was uh, having uh, implementing uh, smart replies um, in any notification that uh, comes to the watch. And here we're partnered with uh, Google Research, um, or now known as Google AI, uh, on the first on-device machine learning model, um, and basically really helped to um, build the first TensorFlow Lite model um, and deploy it to real users. And this also resulted in one of the first. So Google's first. Uh, what it means is uh, simplified Chinese uh, on-device uh, TensorFlow Lite model is now available uh, for our users in mainland China. It does not require any network connection. Um, all the inference is done on the device itself. So how do you do this? If you want to go the hard way, then there is a paper that we have published uh, called Projection Net. And here's one of the simpler diagrams and simpler uh, equations that you will find in the paper. However, you're all Android developers. So what have we done? Just one line of code. So in your notification, all you need to say is, hey, set allow generator reply equal to true, then we'll just do that for you. Um, so on your phone, when you are sending a message, when we bridge them and we see this, then we go, oh, we could just put smart replies underneath. Um, no need to send again, just to repeat, no data is sent to Google, and everything is done on device. So that's kind of Wear OS. The next thing that I'm going to talk about is what we uh, just launched at I.O. this year, uh, ML Kit, and it's currently in beta, and it provides a number of functions. Um, so it, we, launch, we are launching with uh, five uh, functions, and then smart replies in your app is uh, basically coming. Um, so the five that we launch are landmark recognition, image labeling, text recognition, face detection, and barcode scanning. And you will see that below, uh, below each one of those categories, I've put a cloud and a, uh, and a phone next to it. So the one with the cloud is uh, the ones that are relying on uh, Google Cloud Platform, and um, the, the inference is done on the cloud. Um, and then the one with the phone are, are on device model. Uh, so you can use it in an offline manner. So today, I'm going to hopefully code um, using the image labeling uh, API. And here's the difference between the, the two versions, the on-device and, and on-cloud. So with on-device, you have very low latency, but at the same time, the, uh, the number of labels is relatively limited, so around 400 labels. 
Um, if you're coding in the cloud, we give you a high accuracy and also 10,000 uh, plus labels. Um, on this one, we actually uh, will uh, basically implement updates of the model uh, as time comes, so you hopefully get better and better results over time. So, what did I do? Um, I took the Android Things image classifier uh, collab, which looks like this. And first of all, I implemented it. So, you know, it just, um, it thought I looked like a lab code, a bullet train, and a beaker um, on over there. And then I just plug in the MLKit API, and it looks like the other one. So, what does it actually look like in code? Live coding time. Fingers crossed. Cool. So, um, in this uh, particular example, I just kind of um, capture the image from the camera, turn it into a bitmap, and then put it into this particular method. So the first thing is um, basically specifying the option um, that, um, uh, that you want to uh, deal with. So in this case, fire base vision label options dot builder. Close it. And then one of the options is to, as you can see, the top one, set confident threshold, and you specify a float. In this case, I will put 50%. So it will return labels are at least 50% confident. And then just build. Next, uh, we need to turn the image that we have, uh, the bitmap, into a uh, format that uh, Firebase understand. So file image equal Firebase image tr -tr 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 vision image ah. dot. So you can see that you have different options. So I'm going to use the one from bitmap, but you can also see that you can feed in uh, a camera image or a byte array. It depends on the different options. Um, so I'm going to, if I can spell correctly, bitmap. Yay. Um, one more thing to note is that this um, particular API assumes that your image is upright. And you have the option to turn it by 90 degree in increments. And they are um, uh, basically constant value that are uh, specified within the API. You will not be able to uh, rotate it on, in an arbitrary uh, kind of manner, um, but just something to be aware. So this thing. Next. Um, get the detector. So, uh, Firebase Vision. Ah. Dot get instance. And the particular one that we want to get to is the get the vision label detector feeding in the options that we created. So, specifying the confidence level that we want. And this should be, and then the step four should be very um, uh, familiar with a lot of you, uh, where we're basically just going to um, add the, uh, the on success and on failure listener. So on tagged, in image, image dot add on, I want to say success first, not failure. Uh, successful, uh, great. And then what we'll get is a bunch of labels. So for uh, label in labels. Perhaps I should have chosen better names. Tag. This is one of my favorite feature in um, in Kotlin, which is the um, string template. So I could just very easily log uh, label dot label and confidence label dot confidence. And then I will uh, update status. Um, I got prepare earlier, uh, something to convert the result into text to be displayed, and I will display it in the default color. And then after that, I will also add a failure listener. Oh, actually one more thing. 
just want to turn the end processing to false, so we've finished the processing. In this, I want to uh, log dot d failed boo update status failed uh, and then the color uh, default color and m processing equals false. So hopefully that will work. So just to review, um, we have created the option. We have cre um, tr um, translated the image from uh, a bitmap to the uh, to a, far, uh, a class format that uh, Firebase understand. Um, get the detector and then set the on success and on failure um, listener. So let's see if it works. So run the app. Um, so hopefully it will run here and um, as it kind of built and deployed down here. I'll just go through kind of what is different if you use the cloud version of this. Um, so you can see that uh, in the options, um, there are two um, options that are quite different. So as you can see, you can see uh, you can set the maximum number of results being returned. Here is 15. Um, because the model actually recognized over 10,000 uh, labels, if you set that confidence level to zero, like in the last one, it will return you 10,000 different labels. And of course, you would not want that kind of traffic kind of coming back. Um, so one of the uh, specification here is the maximum result. Um, the other one is you can specify uh, which model type that you want to use. Um, so the, um, the, there are two options here. One is uh, specifying the latest model. The other one is uh, specifying a stable model. Really depends on what you want. So let's see if that got deployed. Yes, okay. So let's see if by the magic of Hangout that I can show you what is happening. Great. Yay. Okay, so um, I specify um, essentially three buttons, um, and A is basically the, uh, the tensorflow model that comes to, uh, on defo uh, by default, and B is the ML kit model that we just coded. Let's see, ML kit logo. Okay, tie. I don't have one. If for uh, is eighty three percent, jacket sixty eight percent, smile sixty four percent. That's pretty good. Fun, fun, fifty nine percent, and a selfie fifty percent. So. You can see that that kind of works uh, on the local model. And let's try the cloud model. So the cloud model is saying person, 94%, finger, 71%, so here. Uh, vision care, 65, glasses, 60%. So you can see that you know, the accuracy here is um, higher, and it also have a lot more different uh, kind of labels um, in this one. So those are the ML kit color demos. So back to the presentation. How much time do I have? Let's see. Okay. So I thought, hey, that was too easy. Um, maybe I should do a little bit more. So I went down the rabbit hole of actually exploring uh, in TensorFlow. Um, and I was in, really inspired at the uh, Android Maker event in Paris, where one of the uh, presenters said, you know, hey, in uh, this American comedy uh, show, they have this hot dog or not, why don't we do strawberry or not? Uh, we're European after all, and strawberry is healthier than hot dog. Um, so I go, yes, why don't we do that? Let's try it. But then the first thing that I realized is actually there's a pre-trained model called MobileNet, and Strawberry is already one of uh, the uh, category they recognize. In fact, category uh, 951. So it would be pretty boring in this talk and say, oh, if you just do the confidence level above a certain threshold, and if it is, then it's Strawberry. If it's not, then it's other. So I thought, OK, let's do something else, something that the MobileNet model do not have. So I go, hey, why don't we do a hoy or not? And hence this hashtag, we are hoy, um, for this talk. And what did I do? So I go to TensorFlow for Poets. So it, uh, the whole collab is about classifying different types of flowers. And I put my face into it. So live demo. I have three very brave volunteers 
that have said they will help me with this. So let me just quickly check that it works. Yes, okay, cool. So the model just say I'm 99% hoi. Um, so let's try with the three volunteer what they say. So if you just stand kind of just, just behind the scarf on the, um, on, the, on, the, on the thing and then press A, kind of look into the camera. And the lowest one, the lowest one will win a prize. Okay. 99%, oh wow. <laughs> okay, try again. 99% again, oh my god. Okay, let's see if we can get less than 99%. 99%, oh my god, we have joint winners. So a little prize that you can share afterwards. <laughs> it's a part of the German flag. I don't know, but kind of thought it was like quite cool. Thank you for the, for the volunteers. So I can reassure you that it doesn't always show 99%. Sometimes it will show something like 75, sometimes it will show um, 86%. So what happened? What went wrong? So in this Hoy or Not demo, what went wrong was basically my bias sample. So in the, in the training model, I thought, hey, I've got 60 photos of me, which I search on Google Photos and put into a folder. And then in the other folder, I basically put all the different flowers um, from the, um, from the uh, TensorFlow um, collab. And I thought, hey, that will be enough. Is hoi or other? But it turns out that when I actually look through those photos, only 30 out of the 3,000 odd photo have people in it. So the model isn't so much telling me from other people, but the model is telling between me and flowers. So unless you look like a flower, it's not gonna say other. <laughs> so when, when, when it's hoi or not, in reality, it, this is not to scale by the way, um, this is what, it's, what it is, because I am just a tiny speck of dust in the entire universe. And when you say or not, then basically you have the entire universe on the other side. And as a result, when you look at the, the machine learning challenges that you have when you're training something like this, uh, it's immense because you need to collect all kinds of different samples. You, know, you need a rabbit, you need a cat, you need to recognize all kinds of different classification in order to do this. So if you're trying to do something or not, be careful. So here are three other things I've learned. The first one is, really practical use of a customized, customized model is try to control your environment um, in terms of both input and also the kind of circumstances you're taking. So for example, if you're in a production line and you're trying to tell between apple and oranges, perfectly fine. You, know, you can train a custom model uh, to do that. If you can control the lighting, you can control the camera angle, all the better. So the more things that you control, the higher uh, the accuracy and the quality that you'll get. Um, second, to make your model smaller, um, there is a method called quantization. Um, instead of using uh, float32, you'll use an unsigned int, which is basically a quarter of the size. Um, and in order to do that, you need to, uh, when, you, when you're training your model, you need to insert uh, what we call fake quantization nodes, which specify the maximum and minimum, so that at the end of uh, your training process, there are some hint as to what kind of range uh, the unsigned int uh, should cover. And for more detail, uh, search for fixed point quantization for more detail. And uh, final and third thing, uh, because I basically hacked this together in very little time, and one thing that I realized is some of the collab that you'll find online are uh, built for float-based models, some of them are built for unsigned int model, and when you mix the two, they're just not happy. So th for the first one, uh, you will see that um, the model is basically expecting a float model, uh, which is four times the size, or the image to be four times the size than uh, the one that I'm actually specifying. So when that happens, you look at your code and say, hey, am I f uh, feeding in a byte array that is full of float, or am I feeding in a byte array that is full of int? So that's the first one. And then once you get the first one, the second one wasn't so obvious. Um, because once I get over the first one, the second one say, oh, you are um, still basically using the wrong type. And I go, no, 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 I'm pretty sure that I feel the correct type. And um, what, this, what this second error actually mean is um, if the model itself is float, 
when it output the confidence um, uh, matrix, it will also uh, output it as float. And because the matrix I was feeding in wasn't accepting float, that's why it crashed. So um, the second one was less obvious to me because I keep on checking, oh, my input is correct, my input is correct, and I didn't realize that the output array that, was, um, that, that, that I was trying to fit in was the wrong type. Um, so overall, the, the number one thing is still put uh, regardless what you what you hear about you know the, how hot ML is, first thing first is like putting the user experience first. Um, you know if you're thinking about deploying ML in your product, think about how it will make it different. You know think about how it will make the user's uh, journey better. And then the second step is I would strongly encourage that you use what is there, even though that you think hey maybe I can train something better. I need high accuracy. I would still strongly encourage that you uh, you use what is there, and then and then see whether the user journey actually works, and say, hey, you know, if I can detect an orange, um, you know, would that improve the user experience? And work with your UX uh, um, researchers to really uh, uh, kind of optimize the user flow. And then third and finally, you know, customize only if necessary, um, because there is a lot of work that goes into a lot of these models and. Um, if you don't have the uh, compute power, the, the resources, the expertise, and the, uh, and the data, then it's really difficult to actually get uh, to a position where it's accurate enough for your use. So that's it. Um, if you have any questions, just come and catch me. Thank you.